Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. I hope you guys are doing absolutely fine. Now there's this one question that each architecture student asks themselves every semester, which is how do I even start designing my semester project? My project where I have to do my best and show all of my architectural skills. Well, there are a lot of steps to it and it can be very intimidating. So in this video, I'm going to be sharing with you all the steps that I have generally followed while preparing for my studio projects. I'm going to take you all through my semester nine project about how I designed it, just giving you guys a reference. Alongside that, I'm also going to show you all how you can incorporate B5 in your renderings and in general in your architecture design stage which is going to be very interesting. So if you guys are interested in knowing more, keep on watching. Now, the first part of designing an architectural project would be understanding the design brief. If you already have one, so you need to understand what the user wants, what is expected from you by the end of the semester, what you should be designing, understanding the area program, and a lot of the times it also happens that during the studios, they tell you to design the brief on your own. Like they would just give you a random idea and then you guys have to, you know, become groups and then decide that what would hypothetically the design brief look like. The second stage is going to be site analysis. Now, again, this is a very, very important phase because before you decide on any kind of an element in your building or what kind of a structure you want to go for, what kind of materials you want to go for, you actually have to understand what place are you designing your structure in. So it goes as rudimentary as understanding the sun path, the wind path, the noise levels, the location, the understanding about the site, the area of the site. If there are contours, you understand the contours on the site. You understand what kind of people live around the site. If I create such kind of structure, is it going to affect anything? Or, you know, if there's a metro station in front of you or what, how are people going to approach the site? So how am I going to design it? It is a very, very important step. So the third step is going to be concept development. Now, this is the stage where you would see a lot of your friends making a lot of concept models and trying to understand and trying to, you know, figure out a creative way to solve the problem or the design brief. And I think it's the most fun part because this is the time where you are not boggled down with any sort of a responsibility that you need to finish your submission by today or something like that. It's just the start of the project and you're still trying to explore some crazy ideas or, you know, just trying multiple options because eventually by the end of the design, you have to, you know, bottle down to one concept. But when you're in the consensual stage, you can literally do anything. Then comes a little more serious stage that is zoning and massing. Because once you have your site analysis done, you've understood what your client wants, you have a concept in mind, the next stage would be to literally start designing. Like, literally. Like, you have to then boggle down to what kind of circulation you want or like uh, what kind of intermediate spaces you want. Will this space work in the south direction or in the north direction? Or how is your user going to enter in the site? This is when you're not formally working on the design plans, but you're just trying to fix the places in particular locations. The final step would be completing your drawings and 3D visualization. Now, once everything is in place, you make sure that your drawings are completed in detail and you have a 3D model. Like I'm not even considering the physical model, but in just in general, a 3D SketchUp, Revit or Rhino model. And you have your renders in hand. So you could actually show people what kind of project you're trying to give your client or to your design brief or trying to justify it. Now, this process in general is not very linear. Like I'm going to be very frank. I have not considered the number of redos a student can get. And in general, also when you're working, the number of redos a client gives you is a lot and which is why there's always this back and forth between the concept and the zoning the concept and the zoning and sometimes you take your CAD drawings to your professor and your professor will literally reject it three days before the jury and tell you some other concept that could be visualized and then you have to go back and make that concept do the zoning do the CAD drawings again come and give the jury. So it is not a very linear process and each process is very intense. So I could literally make a separate video on every process. Now, since I took you through the whole process of designing an architectural project, I think it only makes sense if I show you an example. 
So for this video, I'm going to take you through my semester nine project where I designed a visual arts museum. I'm going to take you all through my semester project, and I'm also going to re-render my project with you guys because D5 really has some amazing AI tools. And there's just a lot of updates that I found so interesting that I wish when I was doing my thesis, I had all of these and it would have made my work so simple. The project was based in Pune. Like I said, it's a visual arts museum. Pune is this, you know, uh, tech hub, culture hub. So it is a very interesting place and it really does uh, seems like a perfect fit for proposing a museum design. Now, the site of this project was actually on Banner Road. And there was this one particular software that we generally used in understanding in general the uh, weather condition around the site. I will put the name here in the video, something understanding what, uh, you know, uh, environmental solutions that we could have for a structure in Pune. Even if eventually I did not end up using it, I still did an analysis like for uh, having a light colored building to minimize heat gain, using plants on the west wall to minimize heat gain. So it is very important that you just don't give the data about what is it around the site. You also give a conclusion of if you're designing a building there, what would be the precautions or steps that you take so people in the building are comfortable in using that site. I vis like visualized three uh, area programs for my uh, museum and I just divided it into three circles. So that was how I actually uh, started designing the project. If I'm designing a you know, cultural space, uh, it needs to have a core. It needs to have a place where people can come and interact. So a circle felt like the best decision. So I made three circles and I connected them like you would see the, on the left side on the sheet. And then there were three focal points. And just to play with the forms, I kept the uh, like the left and the right side of the circle as just G plus one and the center one as G plus two. And then I decided uh, like I'll make a parametric roof. So I added a parametric roof. There was this museum core, there was this workshop core, and there was this auditorium and canteen core. Like I said, I visualized my project into three parts. And I decided that my roof would be a space frame structure because these large roofs and everything, and I thought the best way for it to be is to be a space frame structure. And I mean, when it is exposed, it will look very interesting. Those, you know, connections and everything, it would feel like a very expansive and a very loud place. If you look at my section, you would understand the difference in the heights. I don't think these are the most structurally correct design or the drawings that I've made. But yeah, it served the purpose back then. At the center spaces were exhibition spaces, which I always wanted to have because I wanted to have a code that is interesting and that is happening. So there should be something. Now, if you look through the sides of my sheets, you would actually see my previous renders that I actually just did in an hour. Like it was literally an hour's work. So you could see like I couldn't really do much. They kind of look flat and I could not really express how expansive I wanted my project to look like. So. I have done them with D5 and I'm going to show you all how I did that. The first step that I took before working on D5 was, uh, you know, kind of rearranging my RG spaces around the site. The one of the inputs that I got from my professor was that I had a lot of open spaces that I could have used for certain recreational activities. So I actually tried to, you know, uh, repurpose them and kind of work around on what I can do for the RG spaces in general. So that was the first step that I took. And then I started working on the renders. So the one thing that is with D5 is that you have these really realistic materials on them. So I actually imported all the materials on D5 itself. And I started working on the aerial views. And the first thing that I used was the scatter tool where I tried to, you know, fill the space around the site as really these lush green spaces and that really made my project stand out. So it was a lot of fun doing that. It is just a single click. So that is something that you could explore and you could literally have a forest around your site. You could have these uh, random green spaces around the site that I have worked on for my renders. Let me be very frank. I, I really have a very hard time understanding where should be my sun so that I could get the best, you know, uh, sunlight or, you know, the lighting for my render. Like 
it takes me really a lot of time in figuring that out that is one thing that takes a lot of time so when i got to know that defi has this you know way where you could literally use these presets that could work for interior or exterior renders it literally made my job easier so i went through these you know uh, defi curated setups of what i could use for my uh, project i tried to find the best one and then i tried to change it according to my own liking because not everything is going to work so i tried the best one and then i tried to fix it according to my render the assets library in defi is really massive but i was pretty interested to know what ai could do in this because you could literally give a prompt and that could help you create certain assets if there are certain niche ones that you couldn't really find so i tried to use it on my own like for the project so when i was designing around the project i was trying to add vehicle so i just tried to you know visualize a family on scooter so i could just see how it would look like you know in front of the main road of the project so i tried this but before i actually started working on defi i went through a lot of videos online that talked about this ai agent feature on defi and i was pretty keen on understanding how i could use for this project so whenever you're trying to use these 3d trees and everything you randomly place them right but what if you actually want to know what kind of trees are you using in the project literally this ai agent can help you do that you see in this particular render this whole lane of bushes that i used was literally put within a minute or something with defi and it also gave me a list of what kind of bushes it actually used so this felt pretty interesting i did not use it in the whole project to check but whatever i did i found it very quick so i mean i don't know it was just very mind boggling to me that something like this could also be done and i literally had the list of bushes that it actually used to fill up the scene one of the things that i also appreciate about this software as a beginner and as somebody who used this software for the first time was that there were a lot of tutorials for me to understand on how i could use the software even when you just start using the first interface shows you some tutorials or how you could use these new features which i think which is very important because in general it does it does not have to feel that intimidating and i was particularly very keen also to know about this grass feature because let's be frank whenever i used this grass feature in other softwares it would look very flat even if you look at my previous renders i literally just rendered it i put the grass texture on sketchup and then i rendered it it looked very flat and for somebody who did not spend a lot of time on render it was fine but then if i wanted it to look realistic i had to try much harder but in this it was so simple there's literally this one option that you go to and then you literally see that it gives you like a real grass texture that you could see in my most of the renders now after the render is done and you've rendered the image you eventually go on photoshop and you know kind of do this uh, post production for your renders these subtle lifts that you could do which could make your image look much more sharper the texture looks much more realistic so you have to go to photoshop and do it again but i realized that you could do it on defi too so you go to this ai post processing option you just select it and it kind of gives that lift that last lift to your you know image that you usually would go to photoshop to do that and then these blur effects for your cars and all of your people around the renders which is something that you would generally do on photoshop you can just do it here and not waste your time going on other softwares in general and then you could also try and you know change the style of your render like literally if you want to show a pencil sketch of your render you could also select that and do that that i found was literally game changing and very very interesting because a lot of the times for us if you're trying to sketch you would literally go and sketch and that would again take a lot of time now i'm not saying that's bad but yeah it just makes your process simpler that's how i rendered re-rendered actually my project on d5 it was a very interesting process so i took you through my most favorite features on this so if you're trying d5 for the first time you could actually explore them first so that is going to be it for this video i took you through the process of designing an architectural project if you're a college student you're curious so i also took you through my semester project which was some of my most favorite ones so i hope you guys like it 
And also DeFi is this really interesting tool that I tried and it's really beginner friendly too. So yes, if you're interested in exploring DeFi, go check out the link in description. You could also go through the YouTube to understand how to use DeFi and everything in general. So yeah, that is going to be it for this video and I shall see you guys in the next one. Bye.